You guys seem to enjoy the episodes where we dissect real sites. So I thought today we'd do the same with some funnels. And for that, I had to bring back John Ainsworth. If you saw the episode with him last year, you'll know that he really knows his stuff when it comes to funnels. He should do because he's been doing this for over 20 years now. And so today we're gonna take a look at five established sites with active funnels. We're gonna tear them apart, point out everything that's wrong and create actionable plans for how to fix each one and take it to the next level. So if you wanna know how to make funnels work, then don't miss this episode. Welcome back to the Authority Hacker Podcast, John. Good to have you back. How are you doing? I'm very well, thanks very much. I'm uh, very pleased to be here. Uh, yeah, we're happy to have you back. Uh, about a year ago, I think it was, when you were last on, we went through, uh, talked about a lot about building and optimizing funnels. Uh, and I thought it'd be a good idea to have you back and go through some specific examples of real sites with real funnels that are out there right, right now that we can sort of tear down, analyze what's going on and and kind of see how they're making their money. Yeah, sounds good. Um, there's, a, there's a wealth of knowledge to be learned from it. It brings it to life a lot more, doesn't it? If you can actually see what, what real people are doing and how it actually works. Yeah, sounds great. And also just to sort of get into your head as someone who works with hundreds of these types of sites in, in your business uh, and, and just get into the thought process of how you look at a site and the things that you see. And hopefully if we manage to go through a, a number of sites here, we'll, we'll start to see some similarities in, in your approach. And then the people watching or listening can, uh, can learn from that as well. Perfect, sounds great. Okay, so what's the first site you got for us? Okay, it's called Liberty Park Music. And the website address is libertyparkmusic.com. And what I'm looking for here is three main things overall. There's three main elements that people generally are missing out on the most revenue when they have these kind of funnels. So people, we're only looking at sites that have got a decent amount of traffic and we've got estimates for this one of it being somewhere between 77,000 and 117,000 visitors a month. And what we're looking for is how good are they at converting visitors into leads, leads into sales, and then there's sales and the higher revenue sales. So those are the three different elements. So the starting point with this one is how good are they at getting people onto their email list, getting those leads. Now this site is in the music niche. It's online lessons for piano, guitar, drums, and theory. And they call themselves Netflix for music. And as we scroll through the homepage, they have a couple of different things that you can click on. You can start your free trial, they have a membership, or you can see all the courses. And they don't at any point on there have a lead magnet. There's no way to sign up to their email list apart from going and buying something. They don't have it on the homepage. They don't have it in any of their blog posts. They don't have it in the sidebar. They're not linking from social media to their lead magnet. Um, the only place that they have it is as a pop-up that comes up after about 30 seconds to a minute. And the lead magnet is, or the, the offer is, we'll send you useful video tutorials and articles and don't worry, we won't bombard you. And then it asks for your email address and name, which is really weak as a lead magnet because you're not offering anything apart from just basically getting onto their newsletter. And th these guys have some decent traffic as well. I looked on Ahrefs and it says, uh, it's a DR47 site, it says they have 77,000 visits and they rank for some pretty big keywords like best guitar chords, how to read guitar chords, C major scale, and all this kind of music, uh, keywords so they're, they're 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 getting a lot of traffic but I'm, I'm guessing not converting it very well no i mean nowhere near what they could be so just to give a kind of overview of like why this matters most of the sales that are available for any business like this that's got a membership or courses come from email and at the moment if you're not doing much in the way of email marketing and promotions via email then you're missing out on the vast majority of sales and if you're not getting people onto your email list you're missing out on the vast majority of sales and we've seen this like again and again and again it's like it's always works it's completely reliable and that's just how it's the business model that works for this kind of business now with these guys they're currently i'm going to guess getting about 250 leads a month because what we normally see is an opt-in rate of about 0.25 percent if all you've got is a newsletter and it's kind of hidden away a bit so some people are desperate to go on your list and they'll go and find you whatever and they should be getting about 3,000 to 5,000 new leads a month 
So that's the kind of current, the current state and where they could be at with this. So just that one thing would probably 12x their business. Well, if they're making money from email at the moment, which they're not necessarily doing because they're not necessarily actually sending out good promotional emails, but if they are making money from email, this will 12x the amount they make from their email, potentially, you know, if they actually start doing this. So what they would need to do is create a good lead magnet. So that could be it's something around these online lessons, right? So it's either a free lesson or it's um, a download of some kind of a swipe file or a template or something that people can use for learning piano, guitar, drums, or theory, right? Whichever of those it is. It could be a quiz, something, something that's better than just get on a newsletter. And they need to put that in all of the places on the site. So they need to have it on the homepage, they need to have it in their blog posts, they need to have it in the sidebar, they need to link to it from social media through to that lead magnet as well. If they do all of those things from their high traffic blog posts and from the homepage, etc., they will get about three to 5,000 new leads a month and then they can make a lot more money from email marketing. What do you think about the way they've kind of positioned their, their product? Because it's, it's like, it's not one course, it's a bundle. You, you yeah. kind of get everything. Uh, my view has always been that when you have too much content, it kind of devalues each piece in a way and people don't seem to want it as much. What are your thoughts on that? As a seller, people are very tempted to offer a membership because it's simple for them. We're just like, I just offer everything to everybody and they just pay me monthly and then I have recurring revenue. And it sometimes is a good deal for the client as well. Like Netflix, right? You can go and get whatever you want, what have you, isn't that lovely? But what people do is they paint themselves into an imaginary corner here. They think that they have to have a membership or courses when generally it's better to have a membership and courses. If you're going to have a membership, you should have the courses separately as well. And then you sell the courses individually, which means that the people who want that can go and get that. It means that you have lower price products you can offer people straight away. And you then can upsell them into the membership afterwards as well if you want to, if, if that works for your audience. I think too many people do memberships when they shouldn't at all. And almost everyone who does memberships makes their life way harder and makes their customers' lives way harder by having that as the only option. So I think that they are almost definitely missing out here because how many people who are learning drums also want to learn piano and guitar it's probably not that many so they don't care about like well I, this is no benefit to me getting these extra things and you, you almost feel like you're maybe paying extra because that stuff's in there and you're never going to use it yeah 100 percent. and there's a lot of people who when they first come across your brand would be totally willing to spend 30, 50, 100 dollars, something like that, to buy a course from you, try it out, check if it's good, see if they like it, and then might go and buy other things from you. And would definitely not sign up for an ongoing membership because they're like, I I know that I signed up for stuff before, I forgot I was paying for it, I ended up sticking with it longer than I wanted. It's just like and I didn't use it enough and I didn't get around to using it in the first three months, so I've been paying for three months worth instead of buying lifetime access to a course and people feel more comfortable with that. And what do you think of the pricing model they've got? This like 15, 29, 99 options. Looks like the, they're, they're offering a kind of uh, more tailored service with some coaching in there, the, the top end as well. Yeah, well, I think it's fantastic that they have more expensive options. One of the things that's really important with this kind of business is that some people will spend a lot more money than other people. And some people are, have only got a small budget and some people have got a bigger budget and the ones who've got a bigger budget should be allowed to spend more money. Like don't stop them from spending money with you. So it's great that they've got that. Are those the things that people want and is that the right, the right options? It's very hard for me to say. It's like, is that VIP box? It's got, um, it's got all the courses, it's got all the resources, it's got a customized learning plan, top priority support included as well. That sounds good. Is that the right offer? I couldn't say for certain. What I would normally do is take something like that and put that as an upsell later on in the process so that people who've bought the cheaper thing can then also buy the more expensive option as well, rather than have it as too many options to begin with. But that is, that's something where it's not 100% and there, there are more, you do need to test it out a little bit more. So it could be that it's, could be that it's fine, but it, it seems a little overcomplicated to me. It's interesting as well. There are two lower priced options. You can start the free trial straight away, but in order to join the VIP, you need to email them. It's just a chat with us link yeah. instead of a, a buy link. That's a bit, bit weird. 
yeah, is it only allowed for certain people? Like, why is it that you can't just start the free trial with it that they find that people don't? I, I, yeah, I don't understand that completely. Like $99 a month isn't so much that nobody would sign up for it without chatting first. I don't, personally, I don't want to chat with somebody first. So, uh, yeah. And uh, what what do you think they could do in terms of like sales page optimization stuff then? Okay, so a lot. So if we look at the sales page here, so it's libertyparkmusic.com slash courses, there's 15 crucial elements that need, that you really, really should have on every single sales page that you do. And they're missing most of them. I'd say they're missing about uh, three quarters or so. So the first thing you want to have is call out to your audience to make sure that people who are looking at this know that you are talking to them, know that they are the person who this is, is, is right for. So they just don't have anything like that at all. You want to have a great headline, which is promising something, can get them really excited about what it is they're going to get out of this. The headline is the most read thing on the entire sales page. And if people don't like the headline, they often won't go on to read the rest of it. So the headline at the moment is online music lessons on demand, which is inutterably boring. There's almost nothing to it. Um, it does tell you what's included, which is, which is okay, but it's not making any kind of a promise. So to give an idea, here's a headline we've got from one of our clients on a, this is in the self-development space, um, on a sales page for them. They are helping people with um, personal development and self-love. And the headline there is discover a new way to heal, deepen your sense of self-love and be yourself. So you're making a big promise about what's going to change in somebody's life, whereas here is, is very dull. Uh, next one is you want to have a great sub, sub headline. And the sub headline on this site is Liberty Park Music provides courses in piano, guitar, drum and music theory, which is, again, super dull and doesn't promise you anything very much. So what we want to do here is be able to expand on the headline, tell people again how much better their life is going to be, make them a promise, make them excited about this, but in a little bit more detail because we can have slightly smaller font for the subheadline, we can have a few more words in there. So that's that's pretty poor as well, I would say. I was also having a look at their uh, uh, shopping cart page, and that's something we've been uh, testing quite a lot on Authority Hacker recently. And it makes a huge difference. They're very like small changes, very subtle things on there. But I think just in general, uh, a checkout page needs to inspire trust that you know, you're not going to steal their credit card details. And unfortunately, this site, it looks like they've just used kind of like a gravity form, not really very well styled. They've got some maybe superfluous fields here that, that you don't really need on a, a shopping cart. You can ask that later. Um, and it, yeah, it just doesn't really inspire a lot of trust, I think. Yeah, there's a few things that you want to have on a, on a checkout page. It's mostly about making it easy for people and reassuring them that they're in the right place and that it's all going to be fine. And so we want things like testimonials on the checkout page. We want trust badges. We want to have a guarantee telling people that, you know, if you buy this and you're not happy, you're going to get your money back. Making that very clear, not just saying it, but having a big badge for it. Um, letting people know it's a secure checkout process, reducing the number of fields that you need to have. Um, and what we've seen with this is an increase in conversion rate on that checkout page of between 30% and 500% by, in, by simplifying it down and including all of those things. And yeah, so we're missing a lot of that stuff here. What's your, so you, you mentioned about guarantees. Uh, I know quite a few people who have online courses or programs that are kind of a bit, I would say, sick and fed up of people pirating their stuff. So they, they don't have guarantees because of that. They're, or they, they're like, well, if, if you, these people are going to buy it, then I'm going to keep their money because people will buy it and refund it and, you know, just, just kind of like do nefarious things there. But my view has always been that that's just a cost of doing business. A certain percentage of people are always going to do that. So why mess up the, the offer for the other, uh, you know, bigger percentage of people who are on the fence? Yeah, 100%. I'm totally with you. What you've got to look at is somebody is taking a risk. Is it going to be you or is it going to be the customer? I think it should be you. You're the one who's running a business here. Why should the customer have to take risks? Now, are there going to be scumbags out there who deliberately buy it, refund, keep, the, keep access to stuff? Sure. Yeah. Okay. So what do you want? Do you want to feel justified or do you want to run a profitable business? 
Like, what's, you know, what really matters to you here? And the people who are good customers, but are unsure, they're on the fence, they're not certain, is this definitely going to be right for me? What if I buy it and it's not quite right? And who might refund, but might not, they just won't buy if you don't have that guarantee, if you don't have that refund policy. And so I think you should absolutely have it. Okay. Uh, so is there anything else on this site or should we move on to the next one? So one last thing that I think is absolutely crucial is that they don't have any kind of an order bump or any kind of an upsell. And we've talked about order bumps and upsells many times. Um, <laughs> and it's a very, very big deal. On average, they can increase your revenue by 30 to 50% if you put both of them in place. So an order bump is on the checkout page, having a tick box with something else that people can buy. And an upsell is after someone's finished checking out, having the confirmation page where someone can buy something extra. So in this case, where it's a membership, something extra could be buy the annual membership at a discounted price, for example. Or if someone's just signed up for the free trial, why not Why not? You know, pay for the first three months up front if you're really certain? And they don't have either of those things in place at all, nothing. That's uh, th That functionality is something which most shopping cart software these days, most good ones, makes it much easier to, to implement as well. We use Thrivecart on Authority Hacker. I know Sam Cart and all the big ones really do do these things as, as well. Um, but if you're kind of, looks like the site's kind of hacked it together with gravity forms and kind of almost made their own shopping cart here in a way uh, that, that might be a little bit more tricky to, to implement that kind of stuff. Yeah, nearly every checkout software, this is easy. It's just built in, it's part of, it's part of the way that they work and you should have that because this is, you know, you should make it easy for customers to buy and you should make it easy for them to be able to buy more if they want to. And yeah, so I, I feel like they've, they've tried to save money here on something, which is an area you shouldn't be saving money on. Yeah. Uh, basically, if you have a, if you have any kind of funnel and you don't have order bumps and upsells implemented, that's probably, would you say the first thing or one of the first things that you need to work on? hundred percent. I'd always start with order bumps, like always it's, if you've already got sales coming in and you don't have an order bump and you put it in place and it's it's the easiest thing you can do that's going to increase your revenue and it's you know you can write and thank me later it's so good okay shall we move on to the next site then yeah sure so the next one is online yoga school so it's online yoga dot school and uh, i'm just gonna pull that up here and it looks like these guys have got somewhere, it depends, right? Depending whether you're looking at similar web or Ahrefs, it's, it's somewhere between a few thousand visitors a month and a hundred thousand. So uh, <laughs> it's quite a, quite a big uh, variation here. And what we're looking at is first thing again, what's their lead magnet like? How good are they at getting people to opt in? And they have got no lead magnet on the homepage. They have got no lead magnet on blog posts. In fact, as far as I could tell, they've got no lead magnet anywhere. So they're probably not getting any opt-ins apart from customers. They're just not building up their email list. And they do have emails that go out, but I'm kind of not, it's, it's almost like you'd have to fight to get onto their email list. So that's a, that's a huge missing, that's a huge gap for them in terms of actually um, being able to make those sales. So then the next thing is how good are they converting their leads into sales? So if we look at their uh, sales page, this is super interesting the way they've done it. Um, there's there's a lot of things that are, that are wrong here. So I've pulled up one of them. The first thing is that they have as the headline, the name of the course. And nearly everybody does this, just, just describes what the course is as a headline. And people miss what a headline is for what the point of it is. Like I said, it's about making a big promise to people. So this one, I'm looking at one in particular, it's called the RYT-200 hour yoga teacher training bundle, which is just, it means nothing. And it's, uh, it's, it's, it's not explaining at all what it is you're getting out of this. And then their sub headline is just a, basically a description of what's included in the course. It says a Yoga Alliance registered 200 hour yoga instructor training online certificate includes bonus enrollments in restorative yoga teacher training certification, chair yoga teacher certification. I don't know how to say this one. Ayurveda specialist certification, 10 days meditation. So it's just like listing off what's included, which is totally not what the sub headline is for either. So that should be explaining to people why they should be buying this. Um, so that needs a huge amount of work as well. 
Uh, they've got two pricing options on this one. Uh, they have a overall price for buying it and a monthly price. So the monthly price is five lots of $85 and the overall one is $395 and they've got that on the sales page, which is a uh, not a good idea, it's confusing. And every time that you confuse people, you're gonna lose them. You're gonna have more people who just drop out and go, I don't know how this works, I don't know what's going on and just give up on the process. They've got on this page a link to a video. And I was like, oh, this is exciting. They've got a sales video. You don't normally see that on sales pages from a lot of courses. This is excellent, but it doesn't play. So <laughs> that was really disappointing. I was really excited about that. Um, there's a link, and you click it and just nothing happens. If you do have a sales video, it should be at the top above the fold for anybody who's on desktop and it should be nice and easy, very high up for people on mobile as well. They don't have that there. Um, in terms of features, that's one of the next things that we're looking at. It tells people to click on each course. So what's happened is this is a bundle of different courses and it links to all of the sales pages for each of the other courses that are included in it, which is super confusing. So if you're on that page and you see one of the courses, it's very easy for you to click on that, go somewhere else and have lost track of where you were and what it was you were originally looking at. So what they should have instead is they should have information on the main sales page about each of those courses that's included, just a few bullet points explaining it. What's even more confusing is one of those things that's included looks to be like another bundle of stuff <laughs> as well. So it's kind of, yeah. Where am I? What's happening? What's going on here? Yeah, this is, it's the whole thing is super, it's, it's very distracting. You kind of don't know where you are there. Um, they've got a section about the course itself, which you're like, okay, this, is, this sounds pretty good but it's quite hard to read. They should split that out into bullet points as well. And they've got stuff about what you learn, but it, it talks about features. It doesn't talk about the benefits of it. It doesn't talk about how it's different to anybody else. It doesn't talk about what problem it solves in your life. It's, it's way too descriptive. I noticed that a lot in this site and, and other sites where people maybe like not quite so experienced in copywriting is they, they just focus on telling you what's in the, in the course rather than how it's gonna help you, the, the benefit. Yeah. Yeah, exactly. And if, if you're trying to figure out when you're writing your own sales page, well, what do I include? What is the benefits? Just to ask yourself the question, so what? Okay, it includes, in this case, let's have a look at some of the including in, uh, stuff in the course. It includes 200 hours of YTT options. It includes uh, prenatal yoga teacher training. So what? What does that allow you to do? You're becoming a better yoga teacher, so... Now you're going to be able to teach to people who are prenatal. Okay, so is that going to expand the amount of people that you can teach? Is that something where you can make more money from that? Is that an audience you've probably got coming to you already who you now are able to actually satisfy? Is it that you're able to make sure it's safe for your customers if they are, you know, pregnant and, and want to attend your classes? What is the what is the next step? And keep asking that question until you've got to something where you're like, okay, if someone reads this and they understand what that what it is that I'm saying they're gonna see how their life will be better. Yeah, and you sort of change the dynamic of the purchasing decision from how much is this gonna cost me to how much am I gonna make on this investment when I can get all these new clients from having these new skills or whatever. Yeah, exactly. What is it that your customers already care about and then tell them that they're going to get it? The next thing on this one that is super, so there's a few other things that are missing very briefly on that sales page. Uh, Call to action, one of them takes you to a checkout page, one of them takes you to a different checkout page, it's very confusing. There's no guarantee on the sales page. But the next big thing I think is the checkout page itself. So if you go through to the checkout page, then what you see is that there is, um, you have to create an account. Now, why do I have to create an account? Why is that essential? It's not, there's no absolute need for me to create a password before I go and buy this. So that's a distraction. Now, the reason they've got that is you might be buying multiple different courses from them, but it's, it, it's just any time that you add in extra fields, you tend to lose people in this process. If you go through that and you do create an account, then it doesn't have, again, the same stuff as before, right? It doesn't have a reminder of what products are included and what bonuses are included with the benefits about them. Now, when, when I say that, we're not talking about like you had on the sales page, we're talking about like, 
four bullet points as a summary of it, but just make sure people know I'm actually buying the thing that I meant to be buying. I'm not gone to the wrong checkout page by mistake and a reminder of why it's good. It doesn't have testimonials. Testimonials are very, very important on a checkout page to make people feel safe, secure, like they're definitely buying the right thing. Um, it has some kind of trust badges. So it says you get secure checkout, but it doesn't actually have a badge that brings people's attention to it. And that's kind of quite simple to do. You can find these graphics online. They're pretty simple, just saying that there is, it's, it's going to be safe, that the checkout process is going to be all right. So something, that, something that really stood out for me is they have this, like it, rather than creating an account, you can sign in, but you can only sign in with LinkedIn, not Facebook. <laughs> I that. That's really unusual for like, a, especially for like a yoga business, you know? <laughs> yeah, that is okay. That is kind of confusing. Yeah. Um, one thing that these guys are doing, which I'm really impressed by and is not very common, is they are doing in their emails, they're doing a flash sale. Um, now, flash sales are great. They're a really good way of making additional revenue from your email list. Now, of course, we've, we've talked about the fact they don't have enough people on their email list because the lead magnet's not good, but they do have a flash sale. And it has a deadline, which is great. That really helps. And you know how much off you're getting from it. So it's a, in the email, it talks about 22% off. But what they do is they give that discount on every single course. And this is a mistake I see very commonly from a lot of people, particularly around Black Friday. And what happens is if everybody knows that you're going to get discount on every course at some point, nobody will buy in between. What you do instead is you have discounts on individual courses in each different promotion. So you have a flash sale, but of one course or one bundle, and you make that generally, we make it a week long promotion. You could do it for a day. That's totally fine, you know, whatever. But the crucial thing is don't discount everything all in one go. Where do you stand on discounting in general? I know there's sort of a school of thought out there that says you should never discount your product because it cheapens it or whatever. And then there's, there's people that just always sell at a discount. So what's, what's your opinion there? Yeah, in the course and membership business, discounts is a fundamental part of the way the business model works. And so I, had a, I have a, a friend who uh, you probably know as well, actually, and she was saying the same thing to me. So I, I saw her three years ago at a, a conference and she told and I told her that she should be doing discounts and email promotions. And she told me she didn't want to cheapen her brand and she didn't want to give discounts and she didn't like the idea of it. And I said, why not just increase the price? And after you increase the price, you can then discount back to what it was before. And she didn't like the idea and she didn't do it. And she told me two years later, her revenue was still pretty stable at what it had been at. And then I talked to her about three months ago and she told me that she's now increased revenue by 50%. And I was like, this is fantastic. What have you done? This is amazing. I'm so pleased for you. And she said, what I started doing is email promotions with discounts. <laughs> and I was like, just don't say anything, John, just let it go. <laughs> don't, don't mention that I told her that before, but it's like, it works. It just works really, really well in the course space. If you're selling luxury yachts, then fine, don't do discounts. If you're selling consulting, maybe you don't do discounts. If you're selling online courses, do discounts. They really work. You must have a lot of uh, I told you so moments in this industry. <laughs> I try and keep them to myself. Yeah, I, I sometimes sometimes it slips out and I, I can't help myself. But it's uh, yeah, like, there's just certain things that everybody gets stuck on. And it's, I get, I get that there's certain blockages people have got or beliefs that people have. And it's, it's, it's once you've seen it enough times, you just know that it's not true. But the, I guess for the other way of looking at it is despite making all those kind of mistakes, there's a lot of people out there still, including this site, I, I assume still making probably quite decent money out of this. Uh, and you know, they, they don't really seem to know what they're doing too much. So for anyone who's thinking about starting with funnels or creating a funnel for an existing site then you know you don't have to get all these things right to to make decent money out of it no absolutely so there's three kind of legs to the stool really with this one is driving a lot of traffic and you know building up trust by having high quality content second one is having great courses that people really love they like the topic that's covered they like the course they're not refunding because they think it's really great they really get a lot of value from it it's a, it's a decent fair price and then the third one is the funnel. Now, if you don't have the funnel part, you can actually do pretty, like, pretty well. I know people making tens of thousands a month who don't have that part in place because they've built up lots of traffic and they've built up great courses. 
But if you put all three parts in place and you've got at least a decent funnel as well, it multiplies the other two out. So you then all of a sudden, if you have no funnel, you have a really poor funnel, people can just buy on the site, they can't get into your email list, they can't buy from email promotions, you don't have order bumps, you don't have upsells, all of that stuff, and you're making 10,000 a month, you implement this, you can go to 50,000 a month. Like, and it's the average we're seeing with our, our group coaching clients is they're about five times in their revenue in about six months. That's kind of the normal because most of them haven't got this stuff in place when they come. The other thing that really bothers me about this yoga school site is their, their header. They've got this, uh, their logo, which is about 10 times the size of 10 times the height of all of the navigation menu items. And then when you scroll down, it doesn't disappear. It just stays there. So if you're on like a smaller resolution, then it takes up about a fifth or a quarter of the screen, whatever page you're on, even on the sales page. Yeah, I think people are a little bit too in love with themselves. <laughs> they just make like, you know, they make the navigation, they make the header at the top, just just stick around too much, too big. It's just, I don't know. I, I, I guess it's people aren't quite sure what to do or maybe it's like their ego's got in the way or something. Yeah, we, we, uh, what's always worked well for us is when you scroll down, it disappears. And then if you, even if you're halfway down the page, if you scroll up, it reappears again. So generally people scrolling up, trying to get to the menu to navigate something and navigate somewhere. And, and that seemed to work quite well. Yeah, yeah, totally. Uh, anything else on this one or should, should we move on? There's, there's, there's one more thing that's a common theme. There's no order bump. <laughs> I, feel, I feel like every example we're going to see here is going to have lack an order bump or an upsell at some point yeah every nobody has order bumps and it 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 almost makes me upset i'm kind of learning to deal with it because it's like i get to be the one who tells people do an order bump and then you make a bunch more money and we had that conversation you know whenever it was a year ago and it's great but it's it's built into all of the software. It's there as a feature and almost nobody's doing it. And it's it's not work. It's, oh, it's very little work to do it. You just take an existing product and you add it as an order bump and you'll make more money. Is there ever a case though when order bumps, because people think they maybe have to buy this other thing to get the value out of it, suddenly they see it as, oh, that's making the whole offer more expensive now. And it could it, could it affect conversion rates, say? So we've tracked this a lot and the only place we've seen an actual decrease in conversion rate that, that came anywhere close to balancing out the amount of money that you're making additionally from it was in the language learning space. So if people are not, English isn't their first language, then sometimes they were getting confused about what is it, that do, do I have to tick this? And then they buy it and then they email and say, oh, I didn't mean to get that thing as well. And they didn't kind of understand what was going on. But that's the only place that we've seen that. Normally what we're seeing is it increases revenue by about 20% and it doesn't lead to, like, if it leads to a decrease in checkout rate, we're talking very, very small. And we've, we've run a lot of tests on this to be absolutely sure. So, and then what also happens is people who buy the order bump are then more likely to buy the upsell and more likely to buy other things from you as well. We track this kind of the whole way through the process. And so it increases customer lifetime value too. Okay, uh, so shall we move on to the next one? Yeah, so the next one is learning with experts. And this is, it's similar to Masterclass, which I don't know if people have seen, but I, I get tons and tons of ads from them. So it's basically well, more well-known people, kind of celebrities in their space who are doing courses about a particular topic. So it's in the hobby niche. There are courses about gardening, food and drink, floristry, art and design, photography, this kind of thing. And Again, the, the amount of traffic they've got, depending on which, which of the tools we look at, varies. It's somewhere between 28,000 and 106,000. So it's a, it's a decent amount, but it's hard to say exactly how much there is. Now, these guys, in terms of opt-ins and getting people onto their email list, they do have an opt-in on, on almost all the pages, but it's at the bottom of the pages. So you have to uh, scroll down to the footer. It's not terribly visible. So if you're on the blog posts for these guys, then you scroll down to the bottom, then a bunch of them have got have got an opt-in. They've got a way of signing up. But it's if you look at the one on the homepage, it says stay updated, receive free learning with experts updates by email, including special offers and new courses, and a button that says join. And then there's an enormously long field, first name, last name, email, and password. Why you need a password to get onto their newsletter, I have no idea. 
They also have requirements about what your password is like. And even though the thing that you are signing up to is the newsletter, you also have to have a, you also have to tick the box to get onto the newsletter as well. So that's not going to work terribly. <laughs> They seem to have been fallen foul of like a GDPR consultation there, I think. Yeah. <laughs> so I don't know what happens if you sign up for that and you don't tick the box. I guess nothing, I guess, something along those lines. So, yeah, they're not going to get a lot of people onto that. Um, they should be getting, based on their traffic, somewhere between 1,000 and 5,000 new leads a month depending on what their actual traffic is out of those estimates. They're probably getting about 100 to 400 new leads a month at the moment. Uh, in terms of their sales pages, so this is actually one of the best sales pages of any of them. So the one I'm looking at is the River Cottage Cooking one. And it's a whole bundle of stuff from a guy called Hugh Fernley Whittingstall, who you probably have heard of. He does like a TV show in the UK. It's been kind of around for quite a while. And what we're seeing on here is they actually have a video, as they actually have a sales video, which is great. We, do, we never insist with clients that they do this because people are sometimes a bit uncomfortable about putting together these videos and it takes a little bit more time and what have you, but they work really, really well. Um, they've got a headline that is not great. It is what, it's just the name of the course rather than it being actually anything, um, anything about the benefit that you get out of it. So that's a, that's a downside there. The subheadline, they don't have one. Um, they have a missing a section at the beginning. We normally have something called pain agitation solution, which is basically explaining to people why they, this matches their life. What is the pain that you're currently solving that experiencing that this course is going to solve for you? They just don't have that at all. Um, but then some of the things on the site are actually really good. This is actually quite a good one to look at. Social proof, they do pretty well here. The guy's a celebrity to start with, which, which helps. They have Trustpilot on there, telling you what the ratings are for these courses. They have testimonials on the page. They have partners, they have Guardian Select, and the Guardian's a big newspaper in the UK, so that's a really big deal as well. They have got a how it works section, which is pretty good. They don't have a guarantee, they don't have bonuses, and they don't have a meet your instructor section, so all of those parts are missing. I noticed as well on the sales page that they've got a little, I think it's Help Scout they're using. This is just makes a little like beep noise and uh, there's a button in the, the corner where you can email or chat with a, an expert. So I guess they have like live chat sales, I guess it is, mm. uh, if you have any questions. Yeah, and that's not something that we've experimented with much to see how much difference it actually makes. Have you? Yeah, we, we've always used it. So we haven't really uh, experimented with it too much in terms of t taking it away, but there you need to if you have it you need to man it and you need to make sure you're answering within sort of 30 seconds or something otherwise it creates a more negative experience than a than a positive one but if you can do that then yeah there's a lot of kind of on the fence people that will um th that you can talk to also a lot of time wasters on there they just want to chat for five hours so you gotta you gotta sort of be careful there as well I've got this SEO question. Can you just answer it for me with some free consultancy? Yeah, exactly. Uh, <laughs> but it, they, they take you take an hour to explain the question. And yeah, it's yeah. just. Um, another thing with these guys that they've got wrong is that their checkout page, it asks you to create an account. There's no need to create an account when you're asking somebody to buy. Um, in terms of summary of what you're buying, they only have the name, it should have a description and the bonuses and the short benefits. Uh, testimonials, they do have Trustpilot on the checkout page, which is great. So that gives people the reassurance that this is actually a quality course, 4.2 stars it says. But they don't have any testimonials written out, so they should have that as well, that's gonna increase trust. Um, social proof is actually pretty good on here. They've got good partners mentioned as well, which is really helpful. Uh, they have a guarantee but they, it's not very clear. It's written in gray on a back gray background and it's quite small. And what's interesting is they have a guarantee, but the guarantee wasn't mentioned on the sales page, which is, which is somewhere they're missing out. And of course, they don't have an order bump. Yeah, uh, it's, I'm just uh, using their chat at the moment and uh, yeah. it, it's, there's not actually a real person on there at the moment. It's just, uh, they asked if I can enter the, my email address 
so they can send me a transcript. And I said, no, I'd rather not. And then it just says, looks like you entered an invalid email once try again. And I'm just <laughs> caught in an infinite loop. So if you're not going to give people a good experience with this stuff, then you maybe, know, maybe, don't, have maybe don't have it all. Yeah. 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 I think that sounds like a pretty uh, reason reasonable thing to say. Yeah. Okay. Next one. Uh, yeah. I just wanted to ask one more question about this one as well. Um, do you think that the people who own this site, uh, their job is basically to w pa create partnerships with, with these experts who make the course. So they're not actually making any of their own courses themselves. So they probably get a lot of traffic from like these experts, social media and, you know, the, those places as well. I, I know that's at least how masterclass.com do it. Mm, yeah. And it's, I, so I would assume so that those guys are pointing traffic to it. If you look at there's there's businesses like, uh, there's there's one that does a lot of stuff around self-development meditation personal development that kind of thing and they have a deal with people where they'll help them to put the course together and then if the person drives traffic themselves then that person keeps a higher percentage of the revenue whereas if the business if the if the business is driving traffic to the course then they keep a higher percentage of the revenue and they kind of split it differently depending on where the traffic comes from but it's a huge, you know, it's a huge benefit, right? If you're working with someone who's a celebrity. So I don't know how, I don't know enough about that business model because most of the people I'm working with are the content creators themselves who are actually, you know, built something up organically. I've seen it work kind of a slightly different way as well, where the, the site owner will basically pay an expert or someone who's moderately well known in their space, you know, 10, 20,000 bucks or something to create a course for them. Uh, and then just they'll own it outright so that you're, you're sort of paying it one off and then you just keep everything. So depending on the economics, that model can can kind of work as, as well, although you run into issues with like keeping it updated and extra work and, and stuff as well. So Yeah, I think this is one of the really interesting things and we're starting to do this more and more with authority sites is you might not be the expert when you're building your authority site. You know, I know that's part of the model that, that you guys teach is, you know, you don't have to be the expert. You could be somebody who just owns the site, in which case you can pay one of the people who you're getting to create content for you, if they're an, if they're an expert in the topic, to create the course for you as well. You don't have to be the expert to start creating courses or info product. So I was talking with somebody recently who's in the uh, woodworking space and he's paid somebody to create some patterns for him. And then he sells the patterns and he makes money out of that. So it's, he just, you know, paid them, paid them some money as a freelancer. And I think that model is really strong because that way you, you can get the benefit of these courses or info products and having these kind of sales without having to be creating all of those things yourself. And in some ways it's actually a big benefit because then you don't get pulled into spending all your time on creating courses and being the one updating them. And it, it takes I, I know what that's like. Yeah. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. Yeah, it's time consuming, right? Creating a great course it is time consuming. It, it, it is, you know, so, sometimes I wish we created, you know, classical piano courses because you make them once and they don't really, the way you play piano doesn't change from month to month. But sometimes when we do it, you know, we'll film a course and by the time we've released it, some tool has changed your user interface and it kind of just, it looks a little bit out of date because of that. So it's, it's quite annoying to, to have to update, update stuff as well. Yeah, yeah, yeah 100%. Uh, yeah. Okay, so sh sh should we move on to the, the next one then, the photography cool. one? So the School of Photography, the theschoolofphotography.com, and these guys have got somewhere between 40,000 and 140,000 website visitors a month as the estimates. Lead magnet, these guys have a lead magnet of some sort, so this is good. Uh, what you can get is an opt-in to their newsletter and you get 10% off your first purchase. Now, it's a really interesting thing to have as the lead magnet and the place that this is, is the very, very bottom of the homepage and it's the very bottom of the blog post pages as well. So it's quite hidden. A lot of people won't make it to that stage, so their opt-in rate is gonna be low. Now, 10% off your first purchase is a, is a type of benefit that's offered to get people onto your email list in the e-commerce space. Because in e-commerce, people are there to buy a thing, and so the discount is, is, a, um, is the kind of the main, the main benefit. In the info product space, in online courses, generally lead magnets is some kind of useful information because that's people are there about the information. So they probably are not doing nearly as well with this as they could be doing. They probably could have a much stronger lead magnet 
and not give 10% off the first purchase as well if they wanted to. You know, you still can give that, but that's that's not that strong. And like I said, it's the, the bottom of the homepage, bottom of the free tutorials page, bottom of the post, uh, blog posts, and that's really hidden. They should have it throughout, throughout the blog posts, in the sidebar, on the homepage, higher up, and they should have a pop-up as well. And so I'm gonna guess here, they're probably getting about a 0.25% opt-in rate. That's what we see with people with a, a newsletter as the main lead magnet is hidden. So they're probably getting 100 to 300 opt-ins a week, sorry, a month, and they should be getting about 1,000 to 5,000. So it's a pretty dramatic difference. Second thing for these guys is that they're promoting membership. Same as what we saw before with the, the membership, everything's all included, and that is the main, the main focus of what you can go and buy from them. And you can go and search for individual courses and have a look at them, but they're really trying to drive you to buy, buy the membership. You are allowed to buy them individually, these courses, but you only get six months access, which I, I'd not come across that before, and that seems a little strange. What's your instinct about that? Uh, that I think it's a really bad idea. Um, e either you go for like a membership where it's pay, pay per month and you know you, you get a lot of value if you're there for just one month, so it seems like a good deal and then people just inevitably stay for longer of the community. Or you buy it and you own it. Uh, like this halfway house approach, I, I think it's a really, really bad idea. Yeah, yeah, I totally agree. I think it's it, it kind of weirds me out a little bit. <laughs> I'm just like, if I'm buying it, do I own it or do I not? I'm, I'm owning it for six months. Okay, kind of. Um, if we look at the sales page for them, so any of their sales pages, and they're, they're pretty similar, they're very, very short, and they're missing a lot of the, the crucial elements. So the headline on all of these sales pages is just the name of the course. So for example, I'm looking at the moment at beginner's photography course. That's the that's their headline, which is a terrible headline. Like, what are they going to get out of this? There's no sub headline. There's no call to action to go and buy above the fold. That should be nice and clear right at the top. Some people are ready straight away. Um, the buying options, like I said, you don't get lifetime access. They're pushing the membership when most people are not ready to buy a membership from you to start with. Most people who buy a membership from you, it should fit in later in the sales process. Sell an individual course, have a membership as an upsell. Um, their call to action button in terms of pricing is very strange. It says 70, buy this course for only £79 slash $109. And that really threw me at first because I assumed, I didn't, I just scanned it and I assumed that it was 79 or 109 dollars or 79 or 109 pounds. I'd never seen someone kind of do the price conversion on the button. And then I clicked through and it was showing it as 79 pounds on the checkout page. And I was like, well, which, why did it say this other thing and what's going on here? And it's, it's very confusing. Whenever I see that, my first instinct is like, okay, What's I go to Google and do the conversion. So seventy nine pounds is ninety eight dollars. So okay, it's cheaper if I buy it in dollars. How do I get the dollar pricing? I'm in the UK. It's showing me pounds. Do I need my VPN or do I have to change the country? And just there's customers shouldn't be having that much confusion and different thoughts in order to buy your product. It should be simple. Yeah, a confused customer never buys. So if you confuse them, then you are just asking people to go away and not get stuff from you. You know, you go and buy stuff off Amazon. You you tell me how many how often you get confused on there. You know, it's just like buy now, done. Oh, that was good. All right, you know, we want to make it easy for people here. They've got a features section on this page. Uh, learn at your own pace. It talks about it's it's okay. Uh, the design's really poor on that section, so it's kind of not in bullet points. It's hard to understand. But again, same same thing that we almost always see. They've got features but not benefits. So they're talking about what you're going to learn, but it's not going to tell you what the benefit of doing that is. Uh, they have a section on here about who the course is for. Now, this is great. That, that should actually be at the very top of the sales page. So if they moved that up and, and made it clearer, then the right people would stick around on the sales page and the people who it's not for would, would know to go somewhere else. That, that should be moved right the way up. Um, they have testimonials on the sales page, which is great. I love this. They've got three testimonials and a Trustpilot link showing they're rated excellent on Trustpilot, which is fantastic. Love it. Really strong. That's going to really help. But the, uh, the, the, the Trustpilot thing, so it's, it's not actually, they don't have five stars on Trustpilot. They've created an image 
of five stars and then they link to their reviews page which then links to their trust violet which shows that they have uh like 4.7 stars which is normal like 99 percent positive reviews like one bad one but it's not not five star um so it's it's just kind of the way they, they present it in that way it, it makes me think they're kind of trying to like skew the opinion rather than um you know get, be, be honest about it yeah yeah and four and like and it's funny isn't it because trust part they're probably upset because they're like 99 percent positive reviews how are we not got five stars but it's like that's how trust pilot works and you want to be trusted yeah they've they've actually um kind of messed themselves up a little bit there but what they've also got there is they they take you off the sales page. They've got these links saying, go and look at all of our reviews in these different places. Well, now you've lost someone from the sales page, so they might not come back again. So you you uh, you distracted them, which you should never do. Next thing here, uh, frequently asked questions section. It's great that they've got this, but again, it links off to another page with more frequently asked questions, which is again, distracting people from being on the sales page. Um, they've got bonuses, they've got guarantees, which is excellent. They've got a section about why choose us, but again, it links to somewhere else. So it's almost like they're desperate to get you to leave the sales page and not go to the checkout page. It's like, I, I don't understand it. Um, the worst one, if you scroll to the very bottom of this sales page, is it actually sends you off to blog posts. <laughs> and I'm like, no, 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 blog posts send you to sales pages. Sales pages don't send you to blog posts. This is crazy. It's like you're you're trying to make people leave. I see they've got their, their opt-in in in the footer at the bottom of the sales yeah. page as well. Yeah, it's like, no. No, you get people onto the newsletter in order to get them to the sales page. You don't get them on the sales page to get them onto the newsletter. It's, it's, it's like they've kind of just thrown everything, thrown the whole kitchen sink at the sales page. Um, in terms of the checkout page, these guys are okay. There's no summary on the sales page. Um, you, the checkout itself is quite straightforward. You don't have to make an account first or anything like that. You can check out quite easily. They've got PayPal. That's quite good. There's a little photo of the, of the to do with the course and the name of the course and the price. And so that's all right. Um, it tells you that all transactions are secure and encrypted, but they don't have testimonials on there. They don't have a money back guarantee. They don't have much in the way of trust badges telling you, you know, this is secure checkout. You've got a guarantee. It's, it's all going to be totally fine. Whatever happens, you know, they haven't got that. And of course they don't have an order bump. <laughs> I, I, I saw something else on here as well. They, they've got this line of uh, this link that says, click here if you have a discount code and then you can enter it. Do you think that when people see that they're then going to Google the school of photography discount code and, and try and find them. Yeah, hundred percent. I mean, it's what we all do, right? It's, I think it's another wonderful way to distract people and convince them they shouldn't buy from you. Cause if you have this thing saying discount code, then what that means is somebody reads it. They think, Oh, I should have a discount code. I could get this for less. They go and Google it, try and find it. Maybe they find it in which case they get the course for cheaper or they don't find it in which case they feel like they're getting ripped off and then they, leave and they think at some point I'll come back and I'll find the discount code and I'll, and I'll sign up for it. Or, or what normally happens is they land on a, a website which has a bunch of discount codes and none of them work, but they're, they all uh, get tagged as affiliates. So you end up giving away 30% of the sale value to, to those sites and yeah, make less money. I never thought about that. Yeah. So added, added problems, you make even less money from the sales that you eventually do yeah. make. And yeah. It's very easy with most shopping carts. You can just hide the discount code field. Uh, and if you genuinely want to offer a discount code, then you, you just get a slightly different link that has like a, a little bit at the end with the code equals whatever. And then you can give that to whoever you're giving the discount to, or if it's in your email or wherever it needs to be. Yeah, hundred percent. And the way that we often do it to make it really simple is just courses are on discount for when they're on discount. And everybody gets it, and so you have an, you have the email promotion. We do we recommend two two email promotions a month, and when it's on promotion, it's thirty percent off, and everybody can get that. But there's a deadline, there's a countdown timer, there's something reminding them you need to buy it this week in order to get that, and that keeps your life really simple. And then you don't have to worry about okay, 
is this coupon code still valid? Can people use that? What if they get it from here? What if somebody shares that? That's just, you don't have to think about any of that stuff anymore and your whole life is simpler. Yeah. Uh, okay, shall we, should we do one more? Sure, we can do it. I'm just aware of time. I don't want to um, go over, but yeah, photography course is the next one. And the website is photographycourse.net. And what we've got here, again, with the lead, uh, with the blog posts, we've got a focus on the blog posts and the free membership, which then gives you access to a lot of free courses. But there's no lead magnet on the homepage. The main call to action leads to the free membership sign up. And the opt in to the free membership happens on a separate page instead of being a pop up. So they've kind of made it a little bit too confusing. You have to create a password in order to get onto their email list in order, you know, in order to get into that free membership, you have to choose a nickname. I hate this. This is a personal thing. I haven't tested this properly, but it's like, I don't know what username I want to use. Like, what if, do I put in my actual name? Do I just put in John Ainsworth or do I come up with something interesting and weird? And if I do, then can I change it later? Or is that like, you know, is that what I am forever on that website? I, I, I find that personally super distracting, um, but I've not tested that myself. The other thing that these guys do in terms of decreasing opt-ins at the moment is they've got double opt-in. And we recommend everybody to turn off double opt-in. Now, the reason that you would have it on and the reason that email service providers include it is because it means that you don't have rubbish emails on your email list and therefore your email deliverability is better. And that's better for you and it's better for the, the company, MailChimp or AWeber or Auto, you know, Active Campaign, whatever. But what it means for you personally is that people who sign up to your email list who don't get round to clicking on that one email, they never get emails from you again, even if it was a valid email and they're a great email subscriber. And what we've seen is by removing double opt-in, we've doubled the number of opt-ins and we've increased revenue by about 20%. That's when we've run tests on this, that's the kind of difference that it makes. So I would recommend turning double opt-in off and instead have a system where once a month you delete everybody who hasn't opened emails in the last three months, let's say, something like that. And that way you, you're you still getting rid of the emails that are no good, but you're not you're not missing out on the ones that are good. Yeah, so we, we've actually used single opt-ins since forever, basically, on, on Authority Hacker. And in the very beginning, I think we were using AWeber and they mandated double opt-ins, but when we switched to Active Campaign, I think a big part of the reason was to be able to do single opt-ins. And yeah, all the numbers across the board just went uh, up massively. The one downside I'd say is that after five, six years, you do have a bunch of people on there who, a bunch of emails on your list who you're, you're emailing and it's not like not a valid email or they're never responding, never opening, never engaging. And just because email tracking and even open trackings is not great, when you try to remove them, we've ran campaigns where no one's who's interacted with our emails for six months or a year um, we put them in a, a section, we, we send them an email saying, you know, do you still want to be on the list basically? And quite a few people are like, what are you talking about? I open all your emails or read all your emails. Uh, so the, the real people can get mixed in with those bad subscribers and it's like, it's hard to filter them out. Uh, but I guess you have a similar problem with, with double opt-ins, uh, as well, at least some of the time. So it doesn't make too much difference, I guess. Yeah, so the, the campaign at that point to run is a re-engagement campaign, like you say, where you write to people and you say, do you want to still be on the list? If you do, click here or email us back or what have you, and then they, they get to stay on the list. And you will then lose some good subscribers at that point. But the number that you lose through double opt-in who are good subscribers is like astronomically higher. And yeah, it's it's so worth it's so worth turning it off. So these guys, next thing then with the sales page, so the, the website address for that is photographycourse.net slash 365. The, what we're seeing on there is the header is a little bit confusing. It's just, you know, same themes we're seeing here, Mark. You know, it, it happens again and again. The header's a bit confusing. The headline is the name of the course, not what you should be get, not what you're getting out of it. The call to, the sub, the sub headline is actually not bad. We've actually got something kind of decent there. If we go through to um, the 365 days of photography uh, course, then what we've got is the, the title is just the 365 days of photography course, but the sub headline is take your photography skills to the next level with daily bite-sized practice. That's like, ah, that's good. 
That's right, actually. Um, the call to action button that we've got is decent. It says it's actually above the fold on desktop. Um, you can see what it is, but it doesn't have the pricing. It says enroll now, but it doesn't say enroll now for this much. So it needs to tell people what it is that they're actually clicking through to getting. There's a lot of other call to actions on the page which are distracting. They're taking people away from what it is that you want them to do, which is go to the checkout and buy. So speaking of speaking of distractions, I, I'm just on the page now and I think they have an exit intent pop up to yeah. subscribe to their email list on their <laughs> sales page. Yeah. Yeah, it's crazy, right? It's like, okay, guys, you have to turn there's, there's options in all your pop ups to turn it off for specific pages. That's not the place to be trying. I, I'm big on trying to get people onto your email newsletter list, but that is not the place for it. Definitely not. Um, yeah, they've got stuff like meet Kevin, you know, it takes you off the page. You can click on uh, view all modules. It's actually, no, that one's not too bad. That just loads the rest of the stuff on the page. So there's a couple of different things that they've got that are taking you off elsewhere. And, and that's not so good. But overall, this is actually a decent sales page. They've got lots of testimonials. They've got testimonial videos, which load on the page. They've got um, written testimonials as well. They've got a money back guarantee on there. They've got frequently asked questions. So overall, this is, this is not bad at all, especially compared to some of the other ones that we looked at. Yeah, it's a really well designed page. Um, they've even got like a WhatsApp phone number at the bottom. They got live chat. Uh, yeah. If we then try and buy from these guys and we go through to the checkout page, then that's the uh, the next thing to figure out is how does that how does that kind of compare with the ideal? So we've got a two step checkout, which is okay. There are benefits to two step checkouts. The benefit is if someone gives up after step one, well, you've already got their email address. You can have an abandoned cart and follow up with them. In the testing that we've done, that actually is outweighed by the downsides, which is that you tend to lose more people during it. So it's like it's that's that sometimes it's better. Or it's not, you know, whichever one you've got at the moment, stick with it. It doesn't matter too much. There's kind of pros and cons with it. But if you go through that and you fill that out, um, what we've got in there is we're missing some stuff about what the benefit is of what they're buying. So on that checkout page, we've got uh, a decent headline, ready to understand and learn to adapt many different styles of photography. So it's like you're actually kind of reminded of what's going on. You've got the guarantee. You've got a picture of the main guy. You've got some social proof in terms of Kevin's work with Lonely Planet, Time and MTV, which is great. You've got a reminder of the bonuses that you're getting with it. You've got some social proof on the page. You don't have so much in terms of the other trust badges of this is going to be a secure checkout, but it's it's pretty good. I'm, I'm quite impressed with this one. Um, the money back guarantee should be mentioned next to the credit card form as well. That would help. But we're talking kind of much more minor details here um, about the about the differences. This is actually pretty good. You know what I'm going to say in terms of what's definitely missing. Order bumps and upsells. <laughs> there is no order bump. I, this looks like it might even be custom coded, this, this checkout page, which would then make it way harder to do the order bump. But... It doesn't have that at the moment, and that's a real that's a real uh, mistake. They're missing out on a lot of revenue there. Yeah, yeah. What kind of order bump would you put on a, a course like this then? Yeah. So, what we're generally looking at is something that's probably about a third of the price of what your main course is. So, if you're buying, if you're selling something for hundred dollars, then your order bump could be like thirty-seven dollars, something like that. Here, we've got something that's a, a 365 day access for $365. So what is it that's extra that can go with that if you've got an all-inclusive membership already? It's gonna be something that you wouldn't expect to be included in the membership. So maybe it's a course from a partner of yours that's connected. Maybe it's some one-to-one -one support or you know an extra, okay, you get VIP access to something. Maybe it is I'm trying to think if it's if he, it depends how he's positioned this. I need to go back and check if he's positioned it as this is just access to everything, um, or yeah, it's not. He's got other courses as well as this, so he could include any of those other courses would be allowed in there as well as as well as this. It's basically the crucial thing with this is what have you already got that could fit. I always recommend people don't make anything new, don't make a new 
product that's the perfect fit with it. But here's some kind of general ideas. If you're selling a course, sell a workbook that goes with it. If you're selling, if you don't have any workbooks um, or they're all included already, then sell the next course that's in the in the process, you know, the next course or something other course that might go with it. If you don't have any other courses, sell a partner's course. If you don't have that, see if you could sell some kind of a physical product that goes with it. You know, if you're selling an, an uh, ebook, then your order bump could be the audio book or it could be the physical book, something like that. So it's, it's just what else have you got that fits with it? And don't try and make it perfect, just find something. Would you ever take something out of the course and then just make that uh, an, an order bump? I'm just looking at a sales page here and they've got all these bonuses. One of them is free Lightroom presets package. It feels oh, yeah. like a, it's like a sort of Photoshop template, I think. Would something like that, could you take that out and then just make that the, uh, the, the order bump? Yeah, hundred percent. So there's there's two things you could do with those kind of parts. You, one is you make them into bonuses, so it's it's talked about as you get this extra, even though it's the same as if it was included in the course. It makes people feel better about what they're buying. If they're getting the same thing for the same price, why not just make them feel better about it? That's that's one way of doing it. The other way, like you say, is the order bump. Is if not everybody buying this needs to have that thing, then maybe include that as an additional thing that some people can spend a bit more on. You could reduce the price of the main course and have that as a bit extra, but probably keep the price of the course the same and just have that as an additional thing. Yeah, I think that's a great idea. Yeah. Uh, okay. A anything else on the photography side? Then? No, I think that's uh, I think that's the main thing with those guys. They're actually they're actually doing a pretty good job. Yeah. Okay. Well, that's a really interesting show, actually, John. Thanks for joining us today. I hope uh, you guys at home have learned a lot. Um, if people want to get in touch with you and maybe talk more about their own sites or get some help advice, maybe work with you, what's the best way for people to, to reach out and get in touch? Yeah, so we're here to help anybody who's already built up their traffic. So whether you've got courses already, then that's, that's dead straightforward. Even if you haven't got courses, we can work with you to kind of figure out what is it that you could be selling, what stuff is there from partners or ClickBank or what have you, how can you create your own courses, all this kind of thing. So the first step for everybody, though, if they're interested in getting in touch, is we've got a profit increase report. We will figure out for you how much more money is it likely that you could make if you implement the whole system that we're talking about. And you can add, increase your average revenue by about 20% within a week if you've already got courses. That's the average results our clients in our, our group coaching are getting. That's the average. That's the average. Wow. In the first week, yeah. Uh, and then the average overall is people increase their revenue just under five times. So it's the current is 4.86 times their revenue in about six months. So, so if you're you definitely that, positioning yourself as the, the, like an investment you, you get back, sounds like a lot more than, than what you charge. An awful lot more. Yeah. And we, to, part of that is we're quite picky about who we'll work with. We'll only work with people who've already got a good amount of traffic. So if you've not got courses, we're probably looking at about 10,000 visitors a month minimum. If you've got courses, then at least three or 4,000 visitors a month minimum. Um, but the website address for that, that report is courseprofitreport.com. And as a form, you fill in a few questions and my team will do a personalized report for your site, for your business, based on what you're answering. There's a lot of variables, so it's not automated. They go through and do it manually, um, but it's totally free. And it's uh, courseprofitreport.com. Excellent. And uh, and your your business is data driven marketing dot is it dot co dot co yeah that's dot right. co okay yeah. so you can also check out there as well um, and I believe as well if uh, if anyone watching is an Authority Hacker Pro member you're going to be joining us in the community on Wednesday so that's two days after this podcast goes out uh, for uh, a little AMA so if anyone has any sites of their own or their competitors that they want John's advice on or have any questions for John, then you can join us there and uh, yeah, speak to the man himself. Yeah, I'm there to help. I'll stick around. I'll, I'll come back after. We'll do it the whole day of just answering stuff on there, but then I'll come back afterwards and answer more things as well later. So come come talk to us. We're here to help Authority Hacker uh, audience and, and pro members as are. Uh, we're here to help you out. Excellent. Well, thanks again, John. It was uh, great to have you on. Uh, appreciate it. And uh, yeah, we'll see everybody in two weeks time for another episode.